Hey guys, if you're new here, my name is Candy. I'm a mom to five. On my channel, I share a lot of homeschooling, homesteading, gardening, day in the life, what's for dinner, and grocery haul type videos. In today's video, I'm going to show you guys several dinners we've eaten over the last week and tell you how we made those. There will be recipes in the description box as well. So for our first recipe, we did ravioli soup. This was seriously amazing, super easy to find all the ingredients, and we all loved it. The kids said I should make this all the time. So let's jump right into how we made this and um, discuss all the ingredients and all that jazz. I used a half of a package of Italian sausage. If you wanted it more bulky, more meaty, you could add the whole pound or you could probably just omit it and it wouldn't make a huge difference. But um, I cooked the whole pound with half of a bell pepper and half of an onion. And then I put half of it in this soup and save the other half for tomorrow's dinner. So I'm going to work on getting this cooked up, and while it cooks, I'm going to get my other ingredients into my slow cooker and get that going on low. In my slow cooker, I did a 28-ounce can of tomato sauce, and then I did a 28-ounce can of water, added a bouillon packet, and some Italian seasoning, and some garlic powder, salt and pepper, whisked it up. And then when my meat was ready, I drained a little bit of grease off of it, put half of it up for tomorrow's dinner, put the other half into my soup with a can of drained mushrooms. I let that just cook on low for about two hours. After two hours, I turned my slow cooker up to the boil function. I have a Kasori slow cooker, so I have the boil function. If you don't, you could probably just put it up on high, but it would probably take a little bit longer than boil. Um, but I added my raviolis and a half of a bag of fresh spinach and let those cook until they started floating up to the top. Typically, when the raviolis float to the top, they're finished cooking all the way through. So when they were finished cooking, we added our Parmesan cheese and our milk, stirred that in until it was nice and creamy and served it up. Okay guys, so here is what it looks like finished up. I'm just stirring in all that Parmesan cheese and milk and I'm gonna start serving up bowls to the kids. But like I said, this was super easy to make and it tastes amazing. And it is the perfect cold weather or rainy day type of meal. 
So if you give this a try, please let me know in the comments below if you guys enjoyed this as much as we did. And we are still having some plumbing problems since the snow and the freeze. So we are using styrofoam bowls, which kills my soul a little bit, like a lot. But um, can't help that right now. So anyways, that's it for this meal. Now we're going to move on to the next one, which we served the last of the ravioli soup on the side of with a salad but we made the viral tiktok pasta with feta cheese and cherry tomatoes only my problem was everybody's making that you can't find it at the store so i used cream cheese because i couldn't find feta cheese at three stores i used grape tomatoes because nobody had cherry tomatoes and i used bow tie pasta because i couldn't find the pasta i needed either but we improvised and it still turned out great. I'm going to add spinach to mine as well as some bacon I found in the fridge from yesterday's breakfast because bacon makes everything good. And some Italian sausage because I used half of it yesterday. I figured I'd use half of it in this meal and just kind of stretch it out between more meals and make this a little bit bulkier for tonight's dinner. So anyways, I put some olive oil in the bottom of my baking sheet put my cream cheese in the middle, put my cherry tomato or grape tomatoes around it, sprinkle some Italian seasoning and some garlic over it. I'm going to put it in the oven at 400 for 30 minutes, uncovered and just let this cook until all my tomatoes are cooked. I went ahead and roughly chopped up the rest of that bag of broccoli that I had, and not broccoli, spinach. I don't know what I'm talking about tonight. I'm a little bit crazy, I think. Anyways, chopped up some spinach, chopped up some bacon, and then I just have my Italian sausage and tomatoes and bell peppers. And my pasta has already boiled, so now I am just mixing up my tomatoes and cream cheese and getting that all just creamed together for the sauce for this pasta. So once I get this all mixed up, I'm going to start adding all my other ingredients straight into this pan. And um, that way my spinach will just kind of cook and wilt into the cream cheese and tomatoes. I'm going to add part of it and then mix it up and add the other part as well as the bacon, the Italian sausage, and the pasta. And once I get everything combined and I just give the spinach a few minutes to kind of wilt, it is ready to go and ready to eat. And this turned out amazing, as well as that ravioli soup. My, I asked my kids which one they liked better. They told me they weren't even sure which one was better, but that they liked both. And that kind of made me really happy, because if I have as many cherry tomatoes in my garden this year as I had last year, I'm going to be making this all the time in a, probably a meatless variety for lunch. Just throwing some spinach and tomatoes from the garden in there with some cream cheese and some pasta and mixing it all up and making use of what we have. So anyways, as you can tell, I'm just getting everything combined and I'll come back and show you what it's like when it's finished and ramble some more then. Okay guys, so here is the finished pasta all mixed up. I already tasted this and like I said, it was amazing. So I had all the kids take a taste. They all said they loved it, but we just went ahead and served it up with the leftover raviolis because why not just double the carbs tonight? And I just put some spinach and some olives on the side of mine with some poppy seed dressing. Now let's move on to our third meal which is clam chowder. I know some people love it, some people hate it. Just really depends on if you like seafood, I guess. But I love clam chowder. Uh, my kids love clam chowder. My husband hates everything seafood, so he doesn't count. But we actually only make it when he's on the road because I try to make things he likes when he's home. But anyways, let's jump right into how we made this and um, discuss that. 
Okay, so I took 11 potatoes because that's just how many I peeled. And I did half an onion, three pieces of celery, and two carrots because that's all I had. Diced all that up and I threw it into a slow cooker full of chicken broth that I had frozen many months ago. And I added a stick of butter for good measure because why not? Um, so here is everything diced up and getting ready to go into the slow cooker. Once I get all this in here, I'm adding some salt, pepper, and garlic powder, and then I'm just going to cook this on high until all of my potatoes and stuff are tender. I'm also adding one jar of clam juice. I just really like to add this. It brings out the extra flavor of the clams in the soup. But um, anyways, let's let this cook, and then I'll be back when it's ready to go. To the next step. Okay, I'm gonna make some butter rolls to go on the side of our clam chowder. If you would like to try these, I will link the recipe in the description box below, but these are our favorite rolls. So um, yeah, anyways, I went ahead and used my immersion blender to kind of make my soup a little bit creamier just because we like it creamier. And then I diced up some smoked and some plain clams. And now I'm gonna add those to the soup as well as one cup of milk and three tablespoons of cornstarch whisked together. And I'm just going to turn the slow cooker down to low, let it sit on low for the last hour to thicken and get creamy while I work on the rolls, and then we will have dinner. Seriously though, tell me those rolls don't look amazing. They are our favorite. And then of course the clam chowder, it's nice and creamy and we just topped it with some cheese and that's it for dinner tonight. Super easy and super comforting food and plenty left for lunch tomorrow. Here are the kids bowls tonight. I have two that do not like cheese in their soup. Okay, the last recipe I'm gonna share with you guys is for street tacos. Now, we just had this snowstorm. It is harder than hard to find a lot of the things that I want at the store. So, I couldn't find some thin sliced steak or skirt steak or flank steak. So, I just bought some steakums. It works. I just uh, diced up the little thin steakum steaks and cooked those. But, anyways, right now what I'm doing is juicing two oranges and a lime and that will be cooked with our meat here very shortly. Now, other than juicing these, I'm going to go ahead and chop up the steaks into nice little bite-sized pieces and then get everything going in the pan.
so here is my little steak and pieces i just diced them up into quick and easy to eat bites because i could not find like i said the steak that i wanted but this will work to the pan i added some salt some pepper some cumin and some garlic and i'm also going to add the juice from the two oranges and the lime just directly in here with the meat I'm gonna cook this on a medium high heat until it is finished cooking and ready to assemble some tacos i really wish i would have been able to find like a flank steak or a skirt steak or something like that but this worked for tonight and i'll do something different next time if i need to but the stores like People went crazy before the snowstorm and bought like everything in the stores. So just using what I could find and that's these little steak em steaks. Okay, so I'm gonna let all the kids pick what they want on their street tacos. We are just going to warm some street taco sized corn tortillas in some oil on the stove. But I also have jalapenos, salsa, sour cream, cheese, and all that jazz. For anybody that wants that, they can just pick and choose, like I said. And then I have one who will not eat a street taco, and it is not my littlest one, it's my second. But um, he will not eat a street taco, so I made him some mac and cheese, of course, because um, for the most part, my kids will eat anything, but he draws the line at a street taco. Which is honestly my fault, because you feed them a lingua taco one time, and they don't trust you for the rest of their life. But anyways, here's how they turned out tonight. They were amazing, and I hope you try these out. Okay, so that is it for the dinners I wanted to share with you guys this week. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you try any of these out, leave a comment below and let me know. Thank you!